tonight I'm not really going to do anything out here. I've just been uh, thinking about the uh, roaster and some of the things that I'm planning to do as far as uh, improving it. And uh, one of the big problems is there's a lot of flex in this front panel, this lid. And I, I can control some of it because I've doubled up the lid. There's two different lids bolted here. There's the inner lid, which is more aligned with the, uh, with the uh, drum itself. And then there's the outer lid, which holds the bearing plate and everything in place. Um, and everything is bolted to both lids. But it still has a little bit, quite a bit of flex. I mean, you can actually move it if you put something on it. And if I, I can address it, it would be difficult to just address it. So uh, I, I took in some consideration as far as what the best way to handle that would be. And I decided that if it becomes a problem, I'll just put this piece of steel on there instead. And uh, this is a uh, 12 inch, or maybe 14 inches, I believe it's 12 inches. This is a 12 inch diameter steel plate, quarter inch thick. Um, It'll be a little bit of a challenge to uh, work on this with hand tools, but uh, believe it or not, it's very, it, it's, it can be done. It's difficult and it time consuming, but it can be done. So I'm not too concerned about it. If it becomes an issue, I do have a plan B. Now, uh, something that I was having problems with was the drum rubbing. Rub and uh, for the most part, I have fixed that. There's, a, there's one spot that's going to rub. Not a whole lot I can do about it because before I decided on the design of the drum, I was going to uh, flatten the lip of the drum itself. And unfortunately, I can't fix that. <laughs> so uh, we're just going to have to have a little bit of rubbing. Uh, for the most part, though, I think that's the only major problem. Uh, and I can live with that. So, uh, yeah, that's where we stand so far. Everything is still operating as it was. I have not put the uh, drive coupling back on. Uh, remember, I made this some time ago. This is just a uh, piece of flat steel, eighth inch thick steel, welded to a nut using my homemade uh, spot welder. Nothing special. Uh, it's very secure. I, I don't know if you can really make it out. You can see where the welds actually uh, really deformed the metal as they uh, welded to the nut. I had to run a tap through it to restore the threads. Not too big of a problem with that. It's uh, undergone quite a bit of stress and I haven't had any issues with it yet. The next thing I'm going to work on is the uh, feed here for the coffee beans to dump in. Uh, I may just make that as a sheet metal. I could theoretically get away with galvanized steel because they wouldn't be exposed to that much heat, but uh, I think I'm not going to do that. Uh, I could use enameled steel like uh, stove, like what you see on a stove, but um, I'm not so sure about that either. So over the next few days, you're probably going to see a few videos with um, cardboard templates mocked up in place. Uh, they'll probably be taped or glued or stapled. Uh, just to see how I want things to go. Now ideally it will be a big unit with some square ducting that dumps down into the unit, into the uh, copy roaster drum. It'll have a baffle that switches back and forth so if it switches one way the hopper would be closed and the duct would be open. If it switches the other way, the hopper is open and the beans fall in, but the duct is closed. And that would preserve the most heat. But I also want to be able to get rid of chaff. And uh, I think that my best bet on doing that is, while the coffee is roasting, keep the duct closed for the exhaust fan. And when it is just about ready, almost ready, um, I guess uh, the proper term is first crack, I would open the hop, open the uh, the uh, baffle, the, the damper, whatever you want to call it. I would open that so that the the air flows from 
the inside of the drum to the exhaust fan. And then when it's time to dump, open the door and as the beans come out, air pulls through the unit, hopefully drawing out the majority of the chaff. The rest of the chaff can be sorted out during cooling. So uh, that's the idea for now. I'll, it'll be uh, a little while before I start getting on to that. Uh, I have to source some uh, thin sheet metal that is not galvanized or treated or oiled in any way. And that is where I'm probably going to run into some problems. I'll stick with my uh, copper rivet manufacturer. It looks good. Uh, it's clean. And most importantly, it's easy to do with the tools I have on hand. Unfortunately, I will be taking a short hiatus from this project. And the reason being is because I have some other projects that have come up. And uh, first and foremost is always making money. And uh, that's pretty important as far as keeping the shop rolling and keeping things moving forward around here. And uh, it's not, it's, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, to be quite honest. Tomorrow is the first project to get started. I might do a little bit of video on it. Um, the parts for that project are actually right there. You can see those big long boards of cedar. Um, that project will be uh, getting worked on probably starting tomorrow. I have quite a bit to do on it. Uh, the other project uh, will remain a secret for now because um, I'm just really looking forward to it and it's, it seems like something that I'm really going to enjoy. So I'm really looking forward to that next project, but uh, for now it'll be a lot of cedar dust in the shop, and uh, that means I'll have to put a piece of plastic over top of my coffee roaster for now. I have put an offer on some PIDs, some uh, temperature controllers, and um, hopefully that offer is accepted. If it is, then I'll have two very nice PID controllers coming very soon. Um, for a very low price, like lower than this one was brand new. Um, in fact, lower than several of my solid state relays. Um, by the way, this is a solid state relay. For those of you who do not know, who are not familiar with this, um, a solid state relay allows a low voltage to be applied here to operate this higher voltage. And um, it's great because, of course, um, they're for, this is a 40 amp switch, so it can handle quite a bit of current going through it. And it's great because it means that I can control things with these temperature controllers, like that unit right there that says bad on it because it's no good, um, without worrying about high voltage damaging the unit. Um, I'm not sure... What else there is to talk about tonight <laughs> so uh, I'm just kind of in the mood to talk and there's no one around because it's about 11 o'clock and uh, it's pretty common for people to go to sleep it's, except for me in which case it's pretty common for me to be awake so I think that's everything oh I did put up an instructables uh, about making um, sheet metal boxes and using copper rivets now it's not a super detailed instructable, it's just about making small boxes and um, it does include a, a template for a, I believe a 3 by 4 box and uh, the reason is because I plan on making a little set of drawers for, um, well, for those boxes and uh, I don't know if you can see but leaned over, up over there on the wall beside Kilroy right there that big old long board that is a four by six inch by uh, seven foot long piece of black walnut and it has a little bit of the uh, pith in it but that's okay it looks still looks pretty good uh, anyways I would like to make a little four drawer parts box with those galvanized and copper riveted uh, pieces and that black walnut I just think it would look good the copper ha gets a nice aged quality to it pretty rapidly and once it's oxidized it slows down and uh, of course the galvanized has that nice gray industrial look that I really like. Uh, 
that's it for tonight. I'm just gonna post this up and probably share it on Facebook. So you know if you're interested in listening to me blather on, uh, I will <laughs> I'll warn you ahead of time. Um, if I cannot get my pig controllers, my temperature controllers, I will probably cannibalize a toaster or an oven for that switch right there, the top one. And uh, the reason being is because it is a 500 degree uh, temperature switch and it uses a capillary tube to trigger the switch on and off. It's not pretty, it's not exactly what I want at all, but it is very functional. Uh, furthermore, there will be another project upcoming that's coffee related um, after I do, after I'm done with the roaster, maybe actually while I'm doing it, while I'm working on the roaster, um, I might actually start on it soon, just because I'm interested in it. And that is, I plan on making a custom coffee maker. I have an old Black & Decker coffee maker that was, uh, I brought out here to the shop to be the shop's coffee maker. Unfortunately, it, it kind of died. I would like to uh, fix it and put its innards inside. I have a uh, salt, an old um, Milwaukee uh, band, Porta Band box, and uh, I want to put its innards inside of that, and maybe give it its own temperature controller and a few other parts, a uh, few other control parts, maybe even a timer switch, to allow me to have a rather heavy-duty coffee maker that is more suited to being out in the shop. And, of course, customized, neat, interesting, and that'll just be a new quality for it. It, it won't be Black & Decker, it'll be, you know, my shop, whatever the hell the name of the shop is. Um, so that's it. It's just, um, as one of my favorite YouTubers says, a waffle. And um, that's, that's all I got to, for now. Uh, not a, there hasn't been a, very much input, at least not as much as I'd like, on how the coffee roaster is going together. And that may be because, uh, you know, everybody thinks I'm doing well. It may also be because people think I'm doing a really poor job and they just don't want to hurt my feelings. Which, being the internet, is actually, it sounds rather unlikely. Um, so, without further ado, that's it. Um, we are done here. Good night.